This is Lager B2C. This was the Hungarian women's camp. I stayed in this barrack. It was barrack 28. You must understand that all these wires were charged with high voltage electricity. That uh, if you just went near these wires, you were killed. That was around every corner. No matter how you tried to save yourself, it was impossible. Only God could save you here. I remember when I was in this camp, I was still with my little sister. We were somewhere in the middle of the block in a bunk where there were 12 of us squeezed in. We could hardly fit in. We'd, in our sleeps, we always had nightmares, but when we woke up, the nightmare, the, the reality was worse than the nightmare. Now that I look around and I see how huge this camp is, I, I, I just can't comprehend it because when I was here, millions of people were here. This wasn't a vast, empty space like this. There was no grass, uh, mud, or snow, or, or dry uh, ground, uh, dry frozen ground. We were always sitting in the mud. This wind that you feel here, well, to save ourselves from this wind, wearing this one piece of clothing that we had on, we had to sit around the edges of the barracks, you know, sitting on the edge of the barracks, protecting ourselves with the, with the walls of the barracks, because we were always outdoors. We, came, we could come into the barracks only to sleep. There, there was a small cubicle like this, probably this was it, which was the couple's, couple's room. She slept here. She had a, she had a cut in it, and uh, in the middle here, where the chimney is, there was a there was a brick uh, chimney like walking through the whole barrack, uh, which of course never had any heat in it. Then six months later, I was separated from my sister and I was taken into the next camp, which used to be the Czech lager, which was murdered overnight, the whole lager. There were parents with children living there, and the whole camp was eliminated one day. I see these pigeons here. Well, let me tell you, there were no pigeons here. Nothing lived here. There were, there were no birds. Not even a rat could survive here. This is a place of... <laughs> this was Lucifer's inferno. The, the chimneys of the, of the crematoria were visible from here on all sides. They were bellowing fire and soot 24 hours a day. And we knew that it was our brothers and sisters that were being burned. The trains were coming in 24 hours a day, three, four trains a day. And the prisoners were walking through this gate to go to the bathhouse. And as they were passing by, we used to beg them, throw your bread. You won't have to, you won't be able to keep it anyway. Just why don't you throw it to us? We are hungry. And they didn't know what we were talking about. They thought we were crazy. Why should they throw our, their food away to, to, for us or to us? You know, Tomorrow, <laughs> we 
we will commemorate the day when this ceased to be the, the, the place of suffering and murder and, and unspeakable horror to thousands and thousands of, of my fellow Jews. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. If these wires, if these bricks could talk, the stories they could tell, the suffering and the starvation and the beatings and the punishments. <laughs> if there is such a thing as a soul, I hope that my mother and my sister can hear me now. It is their martyrdom that helped me till now to try to help the world, to try to tell the world what happened here. And I want them to hear me say that I will never forget them. And probably soon we will be together again. Yeah. <laughs>